Well, Buckley, thank you very much. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for having us there. It's a pretty cool place. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Umpha is all about inspiring people to achieve extraordinary things. So, who and what during your life and career has inspired you? Uh, my grandfather was a great builder, and um, he, um, he he went um, belly up in the depression, and uh, he was the biggest builder in New Zealand at the time. And uh, within two weeks of the depression, he was uh, bankrupt. He was 50 years old, and he uh, had enough money in his pocket to go and buy a 400 acre farm. And he just set to and worked on that. And uh, he just turned his back on the biggest collapse the world had seen, and um, and got on with his job to. Uh, his next venture sort of thing and that always inspired me yeah. how he, um, he he just uh, uh, you know he built houses and he built uh, joinery factories and things like that and and then he um, when it all came unstuck during the depression and sort of sitting around in dog queues and whatnot he, he went and started a uh, farming business okay. which um, my father took over from him uh, later on and then uh, he was he was a very inventive guy but he was um, he was hurt by the depression and was always timid of it but the um, the um, uh, and, and he had lots of children we all had to go and find a job as we left school and I, I left and went to be a shipbuilder yeah. with the Mason Brothers and um, the Mason brothers, Percy Mason in particular, was a um, a guy that I uh, I've modelled myself alongside a lot. He uh, he wasn't scared of swinging a hammer and, um, yeah, yeah. and uh, working with the boys, and that was a 500 uh, strong company. So it was quite a big company, and it was it sort of founded the engineering business in New Zealand. I, I think. He was an old man when I started there in 1968 or something. Yeah. yeah 58, yeah. 1958. So, uh, so he was, um, uh, you know, real out there, do it sort of guy. Yeah. And then, um, then I worked for a guy called Ned Dye, who was another um, guy that worked on the floor. Yeah. And um, and he built brake presses and guillotines and exported them to America. Mm. And then. Um, I started working for a, a, a guy in, uh, in um, Henderson, and the um, and I came up. Um, I met these guys from university that wanted magnets of them, and I thought, sure, this is a good business. So I offered it to my, part, my boss, and he didn't want to do it. So we um, uh, decided we we're at the end of the road and. Uh, I'd go home that night and work out what the hell I was going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did exactly what my grandfather did and uh, told him the next day that I'm off to do uh, what you don't want to do. Yeah. And, uh, that's where it all started. Yeah. Cool. So I guess lots of, these, <coughs> lots of these people you sort of drew inspiration mm. off were people who were, mm. you know, on the floor actually mm. doing the work, yeah. not hot shots sitting in offices no. telling me what to do. And that's kind of, is that kind of what you've modelled your yeah. leadership style? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I've always believed in, uh, in, in um, you know, doing the job's the hard part. The yeah. um, uh, running, running a factory, uh, you know, you can get a lot of, uh, you know, the you know, on the telephone can just about yeah. do it. You just need yeah. a bit of guidance and whatnot. <coughs> and then um, as you get bigger, you can get CFOs and yeah. all those sort of people to help you. But, yeah, yeah. you know, I, uh, certainly um, when I was down to um, uh, at 10 to 20 people, I used to do all my own wages and everything like that. So uh, I knew how a company worked, but... Um, I never tried to uh, do it from the executive side. I always tried to do it from the factory floor. Yeah. So I guess when you when you first started that shipbuilding, I mean, you're only sixteen mm. at the time. Mm. So was it pretty hard to make that decision not to go to university and just to get out there and give it a crack? Was it well, I, I never did well at school. I was a, um, when I started school, uh, the uh, it was just the years when they wouldn't let you use your left hand. 
Oh, and, wow. uh, and my okay. hand was tied by over my back for uh, a couple of years, um, <laughs> every day in class. So that sort of put me off schooling right from the start. And I was a bit uh, dyslexic or some other thing, I don't know. And uh, so I never really got the grips for schooling at all. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never realised that they used to do that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. And what do you reckon of the school system today? Is it do you reckon oh, it's preparing yeah. people for the, yeah. the world well? No, it's 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 it, yeah, no, they've really um I, I think in the last you know, uh, even since my children grew up mm. and 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 now I've got a, a twelve year old kid yeah. and uh, he's he's getting a much better education, I think, yeah. I think it's um, it's fantastic what they're doing today. You know? Yeah, awesome. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And um, I guess you know, engineering is one of those sort of technical mm. aspects of, mm. I guess, of, of life, where where a lot of careers advisors and professors would probably say, mm. you know, young people do need to go and study. But in your case, you obviously just went out there and started working. Yeah. So was that was that hard to learn the skills in those early days? Yeah, I think all these uh, experts, um, they, they they think putting a pair of overalls on is is not the right thing. They, you yeah. to work a computer or something. That is the yeah. uh, answer today, but the, the, the um, just about uh, manufacturing is the um, is the number one asset of the country. If if you're not um, you know uh, certain um, uh, primary produce uh, is, is quite big too, but but it but it is manufacturing. It's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. It's not just mining or, um, uh, or real estate and stuff like that, you yeah, know. But yeah. the, but the um, so that that's where the wealth of the country comes from. And, and I know a lot of people that have been in manufacturing and um, they made they made decent money and, and yeah. got established before they've gone into just finance or something. You know, yeah. to check on. Okay. And how did you learn those skills in, in the early days? Was it just about doing, or yeah, just... yeah, it was doing and, and listening. Uh, being uh, you get uh, a couple of my managers were really good uh, uh, rule of thumb guys, and they they worked off that sort of principle a lot. And uh, and uh, I think uh, I worked quite closely with those big bosses that I had, and. Uh, and they, um, you know, they liked what I did for them, and, and uh, they told me a lot about how to run a business, really. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, so for a, for a young person today, I guess thinking about getting into this sort of field, what do you recommend to me? Would you do you say go off to university, or do you just say get your hands dirty and start working? Oh, yeah. No, I I, I would always uh, um, uh, say to a kid, if you can get to university and study something, and it. it Puts you a long way ahead. Okay, it's, cool. It saves yep. a lot of effort, but uh, but it's not the end of the world if you can't make it to university, and uh, and I've proved that. But um, yeah, that's, uh, you've still got to have the nous of how to control people and how to uh, get the best out of them and things like that. So um, it's a lot of university guys haven't learnt that skill, and they just can't get anywhere because of it. Okay, and tell us a bit more about the, um, I guess, the first days of the business of originally Buckley Engineering and then Buckley yeah. Systems back in the seventies and eighties. Like, yeah. how did it all start? Yeah. yeah. Well, as I said, uh, I wanted to build these big things, and, uh, yeah. um, and I, I, I liked the the machining side of things uh, from from uh, apprenticeship. You know, I wanted to build ships, but when it came to the crunch and working in that factory, I found working the big machine tools was what I really liked and yeah. and I wanted to cut metal, heavy metal and whatnot and I was good at it. Yeah. And um, uh, so magnets were a um, something that you gotta remove a lot of metal okay. to make. Yeah. And uh, so that took my eye. And then um, uh, when I decided to go out and have a crack at it, uh, I I really went in the deep end and bought some big machinery and uh, Put it on tick and all that stuff. Borrowed a bit of money off friends and whatnot. But the uh, but we got going and and um, we got going with a bit of a rush. You know, the first um, the first month in business, I turned over eight and a half thousand dollars, and uh, that was pretty good for 
I think I had three men by the end of the month. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and uh, I knew a lot of the guys that had worked for me, you know, as when I was manager of companies and whatnot. And a lot of them came with me, and we got. I think, uh, I think I got a twelve or fourteen before I uh, went out and got somebody off the street. You know. Yeah. And what, what were the struggles in, in getting that business off the ground? Were there some pretty hard times as well? Well, it was definitely um, 24-7, you know, yeah. we, we, um, you, you've got to put everything else aside to, yeah. to give it a crack. And it's, um, and the, the main thing was the, uh, the hours of the day, just <laughs> there weren't enough there. And, yeah. and we were working, you know, very long hours to get going, yeah. Okay, and I remember reading somewhere that you said your, I think it was your father, your customer, some of your customers, some of your staff, mm. even the accountant didn't really yeah. think it was going to work, and obviously yeah. your business partner. So, yeah. did that sort of give you a, a sense of let's prove these <laughs> wrong kind of yeah. thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Everybody uh, uh, said it was either the wrong time or it's, uh, you, you're barking up the wrong tree trying yeah. to uh, ship stuff to America. You know, right into the face of the biggest industrial country going. But you know, I think I I just caught it at the right time. The uh, yeah. you got to have a bit of luck, and, and if you try hard enough, yeah. luck comes a bit your way. Yeah, cool. But the um, and, and uh, it was a it was just the silicon chip industry just started into on a plantation at the time, yeah. and that was right up my alley. And um, they. Um, uh, the Americans at the time were being a bit cowboy sort of yeah. thing. They, they were uh, virtually, yeah, their old cars and whatnot were sort of junk. Yeah. And uh, yeah. well, the, the Japanese uh, came along with small cars with all the intricacies yeah. and electric windows and things like that. And and they tidied up their act and, and the Americans had to tidy their act up. Well, they got caught a bit. And uh, we went straight in with quality and, um, yeah. and that's what paid dividends, really. Okay, and just tell us a little bit about how it actually works. So we've, we've, we're talking about this before, I mean, so you produce, it's the machinery that produces those silicon chips yeah. that then goes in all 90%, 80% of the, the stuff around the world. Yeah, it? for the, for the uh, computers and all that, yeah. Okay. Uh, and the, um, and uh, the flat panel, the actual panel of the glass screen. Okay. Uh, and what they do there is they have a sheet of, of glass or, um, and they, they fire irons into the back of it, and just in, in a couple of microns yeah. at the most. And um, and they do circuitry in the, in the back of it by putting a, a semiconductor okay. material in there. And and that's what all the pixels are. So they make all the pixels at the back of the screen. So when you send a, cu uh, a certain current in there, it'll glow red or blue, or uh, that, that piece of the, TV sort yeah. of thing, you know. And that's the equipment that you're producing. That yeah, we're, we're, we we in, uh, with a computer, you don't put wires in there. You put um, impurities in there, so ions, different ions that that will react with different um, uh, power settings and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So it's embedded in there, and and that's what makes a semiconductor. You yeah. See. yeah. So, okay. uh, how did you identify that gap in the market? You know, like where did you see it, and how did you learn about the stuff to know it was there? Well, it was it was a three or four university guys that were doing uh, did a PhD in uh, nuclear physics that um, cottoned on to it, and these guys mm -hmm. um, and and, and uh, the American market was looking for somebody that to make their hardware for them. You know, okay. mm. yeah. And just talking about that US market, I mean. Um, I think you said before that it was something to do with when they were going through some pretty pretty tough times. You sort of managed to get in there and, and provide yeah, well, quality. Yeah, it was stuff. A, a, a '87 crash was a really yeah, big right. breakthrough. Yeah. Um, we, we had um, we'd got to a reasonable size. We'd been making a few um, uh, big um, accelerators, uh, magnets for accelerators for um, uh, Argentina and. Um, South Africa, we actually shipped um, everything out to South Africa two days before the apartheid. <laughs> wow. And uh, if we hadn't, uh, uh, we got paid for it on the day we shipped. Yeah. 
and then two days later they came out with a side path. I went down a lot of people uh, went belly up because yep. of it. But the um, uh, and that was a big accelerator we built for them. Yeah, and, yeah. and the uh, and then just after that the uh, the chip industry started off in America and I, I went up there and they they we'd done some prototype work for them in, in the early even in the um, in the late seventies and the um, and then they sort of they got going and they were using uh, a uh, machine shop up there to make them and uh, they were starting to fail and they were getting annoyed with them and and I went up there and the 87 crash uh, there was two or three companies that I'd lost um, in the early stages were all mucking around yeah. uh, I went back to them and, and um, gave them prices and, and uh, uh, we were quite competitive and, and they turned to us and we gave them good quality and that company went out of business, uh, right. opposition. So uh, I took over the whole market really. Wow, well, mm. yeah. And I guess with, um, I mean, about a thousand tonnes of equipment being exported per month, a few hundred yeah. staff, I mean, mm. what, what are the advantages of keeping the manufacturing here in New Zealand rather than going over to closer to where it's still happening? Well, uh, number one reason why we're here is because I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like the country. And okay, I, cool. I've got a, yeah. I've got quite a big family, and yeah. most of them are here. And um, and then your staff are all here, so it's growing, and we've been able to do it. So mm -hmm. uh, well, why change something that's broke? And, exactly. um, yeah. And then um, uh, it's not all. Um, Bad news. We, we can get the copper and the steel from Australia, and we process it here and throw out um, a third of it, just about, you know, in, in um, scrap, you know, machining yeah. bits off it and whatnot. So by the time it's all boiled down, we're only shipping the uh, finished product over, yeah. and and we're getting it from the mines in Australia. Okay. So um, it, it's it's um, you know, I made some really good deals with those, especially with the steel companies, yeah. uh, early on, and they've stuck with me ever since. And yeah. uh, so we're getting steel from Australia cheaper than anybody else can get steel. Right. And um, uh, so it, it's working, and, mm -hmm. and um, uh, there's some advantages in the fact that you are uh, can think about things while they are sleeping, and they yeah. can think about your your problems when you, you're sleeping. Yeah. So uh, it keeps you. Um, it, it, there's some quite good advantages there. Okay, and you mentioned all of the um, the engineers as well. Yeah. It's yeah. easy to attract good talent because yeah. there's no yeah. big aviation companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a, uh, you're a um, a big boy in a small puddle, so uh, the the uh, there's not a better engineering shop to come and work. So it attracts the good good guys uh, in New Zealand. Whereas over there you're, you're competing with a submarine uh, nuclear submarine factory or yeah. uh, aircraft companies and yeah, yeah. things like that. So it's it's um, uh, yeah it's it's, it's certainly. Um, Pulls on the good guys. Yeah, cool. And I mean, with um, with all the, with all this production happening, you must see fascinating insights into these tech companies around the world. I mean, what are yeah. some of the trends that, that you've been noticing? Well, uh, particularly the, uh, the the way the chip industry is growing. You know, when we first started off, uh, a um, the part that we do in the machine, which is the beam line, mm -hmm. that was sort of close to half a ton. Yep. Now it's sort of 10 tons for, the, for, for a, uh, as, as, the, um, as the chip gets stronger, you know, it's uh, more powerful, the machine to make it gets bigger because yeah. it's got to make it more accurate and more smaller, things like that. Yeah. It's a bit like a, um, uh, you know, you can write something on a bit of paper you can see and if you can't see it, you can use a magnifying glass and if you can't see it with a magnifying glass, you use a microscope and then you use a, a bloody telescope sort of thing, you know, and it gets bigger as the thing that you're trying to do gets smaller. Yeah. 
So, um, and that's the same with the chip industry. So, the way the chip industry's grown to such a big machine to, to make these high powered uh, computers yeah, yeah, yeah. has been quite a thing. And then the medical industry's done the same thing. Yeah, I was just going to talk about that. So, tell us a bit about that and the expansion that, that, that you guys are undergoing into new markets. I mean, is that yeah. a big one these days? Or? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're um, uh, flat out trying to diversify as you know, everybody calls it, yeah. to try and flatten out the peaks and highs, but uh, you know, I think um, uh, they all seem to go up and down together, that's a uh, main problem, but the, uh, the medical uh, has gone through uh, some big ideas and, and now, now where the chip industry was 20 years ago, and, yeah. and uh, uh, so they're fluctuating and, and the chip industry can get a bit more stable. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, and just before we head into these um, quick five questions to finish off, I mean, your previous CFO, Steve Howe, described you as a guy who's, who's awesome at spotting new markets and opportunities. Yeah. I mean, what are you looking for when you're looking across the world for these markets? We, we um, are looking for things that suit the company to, to manufacture. Mm, not, um, you know, I don't want to change tech and start building something different, but yeah. it's got to be in the line of, of uh, yeah, and, um, you know, magnets are just about in every type of machinery you can think of. Electric mm -hmm. motors are magnet. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. as a coiled up magnet, and it's, it's uh, linear track um, uh, train sets, uh, 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 magnets and but some of them don't lend themselves to our type of manufacturing, but yeah. others do, you know. So, uh, and the medical world is, is really uh, very similar to the um, chip industry. Okay. Yeah, it's about going after those those difficult yeah. problems that other I mean, people can't necessarily solve. You've got yeah, all the infrastructure yeah. here to be able yeah. to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, well, what we, um, we can go about it and, and the, um, the flat panel uh, yeah. was a, a really good one. We um, decided to put a magnet into that, and it hadn't been done before. And we, we got the magnet that's working there with, with a group of guys, and um, and uh, we've stemmed up now. We're the biggest producer of those machines, and, and just about all iron implantation um, is done with magnets uh, analysing the beam yeah. uh, prior to going into the flat panels now. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so I've just got a few quick fire questions to finish off. Um, pretty, pretty broad question, but where do you see sort of like the, the biggest opportunity in engineering around the world for young people coming through? Oh, the, um, well, it's definitely uh, for, for manufacturing. It's uh, in, um, in uh, electricity has uh, okay. really done a big step forward. You know, the um, uh, Electric cars and yeah, Tesla, uh, yeah, and and, um, and ways of collecting power from, from uh, natural resources and things. You know, they sort of, uh, they, um, solar panels and uh, there's a big development there and yep. uh, to come, and um, and uh, just ways of making energy because that's going to be the um, the crux of it all. Yeah, uh, whoever. Solves the energy crisis will rule the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, and, but devices, you know, to, to make things, uh, like all these computers and whatnot, yeah. they, um, there's a huge amount of machinery to make for them, I think. Mm -hmm. and, and you, I mean, you yourself have a bit of a reputation for sort of saying, I mean, doing what you say and, and saying yeah. what you mean. So do you reckon in business, you know, not enough people just, to pay me to we just go around what is actually happening and you're just a big, big, big believer of going in there and yeah yeah well it um yeah there's, uh, i might be a bit too optimistic at times <laughs> but uh, the uh i find if you if you um think of something and have a crack at it yeah. uh, you might get it wrong to start with but we, you know with a little bit of work you can quite often uh, get it to work and a good example I always tell people is the Hubble uh, telescope. Those guys built this telescope and, and put it up in orbit, and that seemed to be the hard job. Yeah. 
And then when I got up there, it didn't bloody work. And and it just took a few scientists uh, nutted it out, and they got it working. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, if they'd foreseen that problem of it not working, they would never have built it. They would never have yeah. got it up there. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you can't cross all your uh, T's and dot your I's before you start something. Quite often you have to go in the deep end and build something and start experimenting with it. We'll get out later a bit. Yeah, 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 down the track. But um, cool. Yeah. So, what, what would, in summary, you, what would your sort of top three bits of advice be for um, youngsters wanting to get into engineering? What would you say to them? Uh, it's a, um, it's a very rewarding uh, uh, thing. Uh, you, you, you've, um, you've got to be an artist. You've got to be a creator. You've got to be, uh, uh, and you've got to. Um, Work hard to keep moving ahead. You know, it's 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 not all beer and skittles, but the rewards to it is, is fantastic to see a machine come to life. And, and um, but uh, it's um, uh, you know you you, um, you you never have the security uh, when you're uh, an entrepreneur sort of thing. You're, you're risking your life all the way along. Yeah. But it makes your life. It, uh, you know, you know you've you, you've lived that day, yeah, <laughs> or that year, or month, or your life. It's yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's something to um, yeah, keeps your adrenaline going. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you reckon the sixteen-year-old Bill Buckley would think of the man you've become today? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, I I think. Um, I think he'd uh, be quite satisfied. Yeah. yeah also, is there any advice you'd give him? Uh, uh, yeah. Just um, just don't get too down on uh, on on your failures. Yeah. The, um, uh, just keep looking ahead and trying to work out how you can. Yeah, it's easy to look down on the failures, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, so just before we finish off, I mean. Um, what, what's something that, that you believe to be true that maybe not many people agree with you on, something you feel quite passionate about? Uh, the fact that the Kiwis can do it, you know. They, yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh, they don't... Um, yeah, I don't think a lot of people realise how well-trained our engineers are. And how, uh, you know, so uh, if you can get a group together, uh, you can... Um, you can do a lot more than you think you can. Yeah, awesome. Okay, awesome. So to finish off, uh, Bill, can you look down this camera here and tell us what are your wise words for the people of New Zealand? Uh, the um, uh, it's just um, uh, if you think of something and, and it's uh, looks like it might work, give it a go, and uh, and uh, uh, you can get a lot of help from uh, a lot of people that you don't know that. Uh, is even wanting to help you at the end of the day, but if you're doing something, other people want to come along and uh, and be part of you, and that's uh, uh, you know I, I've had a hell of a lot of support from the guys on the floor and right up to uh, uh, companies associated with us or know us or supplying uh, equipment to us. It's been um, uh, it's a hard road, but it's. Uh, a magic ride. Yes, Bill, I think. Thank you so much. Thanks, Cheers. Cool.